Since the 1960s, Burundi has been rocked by demons hostile to democracy. Here, it is the first experience of elections. We are on the 18th of September 1961. The elections by delivery forceps, either the inertia that marked the entering of Burundi into a real democracy during those years. The inertia set up by the Belgian guardianship never wished to set free millions of Burundians by means of elections. The electoral process that led to the victory of the Burundian people the 18th of September 1961 was sprinkled with harmful acts. In order to prevent the Burundian people from massively participating to the polls, negative forces, both Belgian and Burundian ones, did propagate notably rumor of dangerous seal Yatoye he elected on the identity book. That rumor meant misfortune for every person that participated in the elections. The Burundian people defied the demons that 18th of September 1961 and proudly pronounced themselves on the autodetermination by rendering victory to the Uprona party, the party that was led by the charismatic Prince Lewis Guagasori. The victory that was haltingly accepted by the Belgian guardianship and its supporters. The situation that led to the assassination of Prince Lewis Guagasori the 13th of October 1961 while he was going to form the first independent Burundian government. Since then, the Burundian people were thunderstruck and saw themselves deprived of the right to elect their leaders. The very decline of democracy until 1993. The resurrection of democracy became a reality in 1993 with the organization of elections in the pluralism framework. The elections that were held in popular enthusiasm for that democracy was finally found. The demons reappeared to torpedo the expression of Burundians. A group of students rose against the presidential election victory of the candidate Melchior Ndadaye, a victory that was validated by competent organs such as the Constitutional Court. Coup attempts to erase the expression of the majority marked the second half of the year 1993 until the fateful destiny. That 21 October 1993, the fatal day, fixed by the demons. The assassination of the president Melchior Ndadaye that came again to stand for the loss of expression on a part of Burundian people through elections. The killing of president Ndadaye was followed by a series of tragic events for Burundi and Burundians. The democracy once buried, would it raise up in Burundi? In the atmosphere of generalized troubles and the sinking of Burundi in gloom, the Burundian people staged a resistance against the reappearance of oppression, the fight for the mastery of the destiny. The triumph of the Burundian people appeared just after a decade of war. The peace deal signed in Dar es Salaam between the main popular movement CNDDFDD and the puppet government of that time. The 16th of November is the recognition of the return of democracy in Burundi. With the 2005 May elections, the Burundian people got back their voice and could exercise their sovereignty by setting up the institutions of the country. The devils of the Pulse refusal got down their heads to wake up a little more later. Political parties that lost the communal elections of May 2010 didn't get the courage to concede defeat. They chose the sabotage of the electoral process by notably withdrawing from the presidential elections. The argument was that the communal elections were rigged while all observers, the international community, the civil society organizations of Burundi, the media, the religious communities, as well as the mandatories of political parties in competition, declared and affirmed the fair holding of elections the free, transparent, and credible elections. This disdainful and negative attitude towards democracy left dark clouds on the political landscape in Burundi. The institutions legally set up from the 2010 electoral process 
went through hard times caused by political organizations and civil society organizations that never referred to accept the choice of the Burundian people through polls. Since 2010, forces hostile to democracy operated a number of fabrications to finally prevent the Burundian people from participating freely in the 2015 elections. Haunted by nightmares of successive failure towards electoral system, those organizations hostile to elections tempted to put off the 2015 electoral calendar, having recourse to the theory of Malaysia affiliated to the ruling party. A theory that was immediately and altogether refuted by the Burundi government and the vigilance of the international community, namely the United Nations organization. Having lost from every side and accusing the paranoia against an electoral system not promising towards them, the opposition parties supported by lobbies of civil society changed once more to undermine the democratic principles and the lawful government. They protested against the new term of Burundi President Pierre Nkurunziza, a term that they considered illegal by ignoring the constitutional court that brought to an end all the speculations by stating valid the candidacy of the outgoing president. The year 2015 was characterized by hard times for democracy in Burundi. A certain conspiracy against the electoral process was staged and gave rise to demonstrations in some quarters of Bujumbura, the capital. An insurrection visibly prepared to fail the 2015 elections. An outside press erupted in Bujumbura, the capital, and commented on the insurrection over an important football match opposing the police and demonstrators. Political circles got together to gainsay the electoral process and extolled the virtues of the institutional gap so as to finally undermine millions of Burundians and also to expose Burundi to all opportunistic speculations having muzzled girls and boys of the country. The failed coup attempt of the 13th of May 2015, a coup that was obviously plotted by the tunnel of demonstrations, was the evidence of the determination to torpedo the institutional permanence in Burundi. Fortunately, that blow of sword against democracy in Burundi was contained by Angel Safeguarding Burundi. Despite demonic determinations, the cataclysm rumblings to get the Burundian population scared, the train of destiny didn't stop. Burundians went to vote in the summer of 2015 and affirmed once more their sovereignty. Institutions freely set up as in 1961, in 1993, in 2005, and in 2010. The voice of the people triumphed. The institutions legally renewed despite all that. Vox Populi, Vox Dei. The voice of the people is the voice of God. The outgoing President Pierre Nkurunziza was re-elected with a more or less rate of 70% of the suffrage. And he was sworn in. A good lesson for speculators of each and every sort. The plot against the people of Burundi was shown on electoral level. All that remains is to convince some Burundians led astray by some occult organizations to hand over weapons and bow to the verdict of the polls. Conspirators lost their grounds of arguments. Neither the theory of genocide presented by the willing and dealing on France 3 TV channel will make it to enfeeble the determination of Burundians to preserve their sovereignty. According to the opinion poll carried out by our medium, the National Television, the African Union troops advocated by organizations hostile to democracy will in no way be given a warm welcome on the part of millions of Burundians. Those military troops can't replace in any way the Burundian defense forces that also were reputed for their peacekeeping missions in many corners of the world, namely in Somalia. The theory of genocide is a false argument, a grotesque and brazen lie. Today, the crossing of the desert is over. The Burundian people with the new institutions are on work 
and peacefully carry out activities for the progress of the well-being.